Devon Kennard. He's been on the show before. Welcome to Radio Row here with Blue Wire. This is going to be fun. How are you? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So have you been on Radio Row before? Yeah, I usually come to the Super Bowl every week. It's it's a cool experience being able to be a part of this and really, uh, you know, come out, do the, do these kind of interviews and just take part in all the festivities. I'd rather be playing on Sunday than uh, sitting here on Radio Row. But if we're not in the game, I'm always going to come. And most entrepreneurs know about Radio Row. It used to be my hidden secret in recruitment of athletes and promotion of athletes, you know, going in the old school. And today, though, I think the secret's out and the great uh, celebrity and, and athlete entrepreneurs are usually here on Radio Row understanding how to build a brand. Yeah. And that's changed as well in your career. Uh, as important as it is on the field to build a brand by your play, it's sometimes I think even more important for the longevity of your career to build the brand off of the field. And you do that by giving back. At least that's the way I see your brand. Yeah. And you're educating and elevating other people about business and finance. And where did that aspect of understanding come from? You know, you're an incredible player, but you have this great wisdom off the field about branding, business, financial literacy, things like that. It, it was it kind of like spurred from just the fact I had a father who played in the league too. So my dad played 13 years in the NFL and kind of seeing secondhand what he went through and some some players he like you know played with and the stories and just watching his life growing up and I was like when I get an opportunity uh to get in in that position I want to do what my dad did and, and do even better so that was like my mindset at a young age and with that it gave me different lenses and, and a different perspective from from early on and I've been able to build and develop that and now I feel like I'm at a point where I want to make sure other athletes and entertainers they they view it and you know get that kind of um vantage point because a lot of guys don't and you you know, I always say nobody's going to be as interested in you as they are right now as a as an professional athlete. So, you know, take advantage of that. Open as many doors as you can. Build the relationships. And when you do that and you're a good person, as long after your career is over, those doors are still going to be open. But if you try to wait till your career is actually over, then, you know, the, the doors are closed and they may, ne may never open. So it, it's much harder. And indicative of that, you've written and are writing a book. You actually have a first book deal with a huge publisher, HarperCollins. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you. And the book isn't about your experience on the field. It's a business book. Yeah, right? absolutely. I'm, I'm going to be telling my personal story and giving some football ad libs and, and comparing it to uh, matching it up with my football journey. But my fi my finance journey and the and advice I give for other people in similar positions and and really uh, pursuing financial independence and freedom, um, you know, and kind of debunking what I, I view as the American dream and how how we were taught it and and how it's not really working and, and a, a new, fresh way to kind of look at it from from my lenses. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be coming out next year and uh it's gonna be great well i'm looking forward to as you get older and are more focused off the field i uh partnered with marshall falk who you may know is mm -hmm. fairly popular here at the radio row considering the super bowls here and the rams <laughs> are in it um but you know we work in the financial industry and in, in financial uh literacy especially and it's funny because i'm a person who tries to be more interested mm -hmm. than interesting Right. And I get to talk to people of all ages, all backgrounds, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers. And I have to give you probably the biggest compliment I'll give anybody here. <laughs> I think the greatest lesson that I've learned in business came from you. And I know that might sound silly, <laughs> but you, you and I had an interview one time and we were talking about, you know, how many people hit you up for so many business deals. And, you know, you know, I, lost over a hundred million dollars because I have a natural inclination to trust people because mm -hmm. I like everybody and I want everyone to like me. Right. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing, but I asked you because you seem like the same type of person. I'm like, how do you deal with it, man? I've tried to teach so many athletes as an agent, as a marketer, Warren Moon, Troy Aikman, Marshall Falk. I, I, I like try to give them guidance, but in the end, if you're a person who wants to be liked and you like everyone, it's, it's difficult because you're going to trust everyone. And you came up with the best strategy. <laughs> and uh, 
What was your answer to my question? How do you do it? I, it's trust but verify for me. And that's that's huge and something I try to do in everything that I'm doing. Like, you know, you can you can trust people, but verify the results. Make sure that it's it's adding up and consistently. Like, you know, because over time people get comfortable and their work might slack. So even people you work with for a long time, always verify and make sure that they're doing a good job, that they're doing what they say they're going to do. And it helps hold, hold them accountable as well as yourself. I, you know, that I called it the trust and vet when it mm -hmm. went from you trust and verify. But I think what I learned from you is as well beyond as you kind of explained it to me was why is it do you think that, you know, you have these people that work for a long time, mm -hmm. we trust them. And this could be family members as well. But you know, we're afraid, especially to those people to ask hard questions. And then we blame that well, we know they're lying to us, right? We know they're cheating us. Right. I just had an incident in my car with one of my associates driving me and I knew he was lying. Right. But I, in the past, I would have let it slide and been too afraid to hurt his feelings, be uncomfortable. But then what would happen is I'd find out he was lying. Then I would blame him mm -hmm. when I already knew. Yeah. I should blame myself because I'm too chicken to ask the uncomfortable question or verify, as you say. Right. How have you at such a young age been able to get past the uncomfortable feeling of verifying, especially people you know, that you're doing business with you for years. I, I've kind of realized that the buck is always going to end with me and, and in your case with you. So you got to take responsibility for whatever you, whatever businesses, whatever relationships that you're handling and, and managing. And, and in that, it's like you can have somebody, you can delegate work or, you know, hire somebody to do certain things, but it's ultimately up to you. Nobody's going to care about your money, about your business more than you. So if nobody's going to care about it more than you, you got to be the one that's verifying and checking everything consistently because just because they do it right one time doesn't mean they're going to continue. You know, people get comfortable. So, you know, if that's not OK and then that's not acceptable um, for your business, then that's why you got to continue to verify. So kind of recognizing that and it's like, all right, that's that's a practice. And it is hard. It's hard conversations at times. It's you know, it's hard to find out somebody you you it's a family member it's a close friend it's whatever and they're you know they're not doing what they said they're gonna do but um you know it makes them know what the, where the line is and it's like look we're we're all good but you got to do what you say you're gonna do and there is this reconciliation we know because you're a professional athlete team especially in football mm -hmm. is even more important in self and the same thing holds true in business but yet there's a difference between being accountable and holding our teammates accountable and that difference in trusting our teammates. And right. I think the accountability issue gets confused in that we are a good teammate when we hold ourselves accountable and mm -hmm. hold our teammates accountable, but we're not good teammates when we let things slide. And it's even more true, I think, on the field. I you know, look back and I was an average division three football mm -hmm. player in college, nowhere close to Devon, by the way. But the lessons that I learned on the field about this team mm -hmm. and how I was of service and of value to the team by doing what I was supposed to do right. and being accountable for it, even though I wasn't the star and it wasn't going to take us to a Super Bowl or, or, you know, almost to a national championship in division three. But how do you on the field teach these lessons that you've learned off the field? Most people ask, how do you teach the lessons from the field? But I see you as someone that's learning all these lessons off the field. And do you apply these lessons to on the field behavior. what I, what i what i've learned is what i learned on the football field and what i've learned in life they 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 mirror each other you know it, it's uh football is a great example of what it, what the real world is like so i compare the whole trust but verify like you know i might have a reputation within the nfl or on my team like i'm a hard worker um i run to the football i you know do do things the right way but the verify portion of that is in practice even though that's what I'm labeled as, I got to do it every day. And when I don't, my coach essentially verifies and is like, hey, you weren't running to the ball today. You you know, you I, you weren't setting the edge like you usually do. You weren't doing doing this. It's the same thing. And I've like I kind of correlated that to what I have to do in business and and learn that lesson. Like, wow, just how I expect that from, um, you know, whoever I'm working with. It's, a, it's no different in the football field. Like they can know what the kind of player I am, 
but I got to go up and prove it day in and day out. And it's, can you be consistent? Cause it's easy to do it. Like the start of training camp happens and everybody's running to the football. Everybody's practicing hard. What about day 11, day 12, when you, you know, you start like, you start getting tired, your body's aching and all you see is your teammates and you just want to go home. Are you still practicing the same way? And I, you know, I think that connects to like business for me. It's like, I want to be consistent in my business and I want to be consistent on the football field and they mirror each other. It's interesting because I talk about the guys who go the extra mile every once in a while and guys like you that go the extra mile all the time live in what I call the empty mile. It's actually less competitive. One of the things that you've really learned in a long uh, view through your maturity and wisdom in business is passive income streams. Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting is the word passive because you're an aggressive football player. Right. You're not a passive guy. Um, but it's really more about where do we focus our attention and intention of our emotions to create a stream that does not require our emotions or our attention. And I think that's where people get confused when we talk about passive income streams, because when I lost over $100 million, I thought I was creating passive income streams, mm -hmm. but they weren't passive because right. they took so much attention, attention. And attention and emotion to them. Yeah, the income would be passive if I put, put in, it, put in the, focus. Right. So I think it's important for people to realize that, hey, there's certain vehicles out there that don't take emotional value to it. They don't mm -hmm. take your attention. So, for example, if you're an all-star football player like yourself, you want all your energy to go on the field to make as much money as you can there. But you want streams of income that don't take that emotional or attention from it. How do you pick and choose what a passive income stream is? Because I had a really difficult time when I was a young millionaire figuring mm -hmm. out what passive meant. For me, it's work up front. So I'm willing to do the work up front. Yeah, and, and that includes due diligence. That includes setting the right team up, um, putting everything in place. So once you do that, then it's then it's kind of operating itself. And you're more so you still got to kind of check in on it. Um, but truly passive where you never do anything. I think that's dangerous. But for me, you can set systems in place. And I think everything's about systems. And that's like in real estate, for instance, that's how I build a lot of my passive income. I have property management companies I work with, contractors I like to use. And I do all of that work and all that vetting process, mostly in the off season, when I have a little more time, like this time of year, establish that. And then that carries me throughout the rest of the year. And I'm just checking in and checking in, making sure things are going right getting statements making sure the numbers are are, are adding up verifying you know i'm yeah. tr trusting that they're doing their job but i'm still checking in verifying that it's all making sense it's all adding up the money's getting wired over on the day that they say it's getting wired over and it takes minimal effort so i'm able to keep the main thing the main thing when when it's time to do do that because number my number one responsibility right now is to earn as much as i can while i can and i'm not going to play football forever so i want to keep that as my focus, but athletes aren't generating enough passive income outside of their sport. And I think it's dangerous because you get done playing and you don't have any income streams. I don't care if all your money's in the stock market, you have to draw that money out to use it. I rather have enough income coming in where my lifestyle doesn't have to change. Like that's the focus to me to where when I'm done playing, I don't have to draw any money out of my, of my stocks. I don't have to spend down my principal. I have enough cash flow coming in that sustains my life. And you know, that's what I really try to preach to to uh, to athletes and other entertainers. Like that's the that's the step we need to start thinking about taking. And I love that you look at the step behind the step. So for example, one of the key concepts that I help people with is asset-based lending. Mm -hmm. So to avoid taxes, uh, to build an asset and let it grow, but then to be able to borrow against that asset allows you to be tax-free liquid. Mm -hmm. So real estate is an area that you work in a lot and, and totally understand. But I try to take that approach if you're looking at, you know, crypto, for example. Right. C places like Celsius Network allow you to use your crypto or stable coin, which is the same as dollars, as an asset that you can borrow against tax-free. Exactly. And there's a lot of math involved in not only the trusting, but the verification. And you seem to have the numbers correct. And I, a lot of times, try to get people to hone in or focus in on actual numbers and get out of the emotional aspect mm -hmm. and say, hold on a second, let's do the math. And for you, where did you acquire the ability, you know, because it's a trained skill mm -hmm. to understand the numbers and how they're applicable to that 
passive stream of income that you're creating? I think in understanding the numbers, I, I got to the level I'm at by not being afraid to ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. I, d I still don't understand it all. I'm still learning how to build out Excel spreadsheets myself to where I can do my own underwriting. But, you know, I surround myself with people who are looking at deals and, and are helping me evaluate. And then I I'm asking them questions. Well, what does this mean? Or is is the is their CapEx included in the property I'm 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 buying? Because, oh, the return looks pretty good. But CapEx is essentially something's going to go wrong with that with the property at some point. Are you putting money aside? for that because if not you think you're getting a 15 percent return and as soon as something happens it's really a eight percent like are, are you factoring in those kind of things so i've i've developed uh you know the skill set of asking the right questions and understanding what to look for and i'm still learning how to kind of build and underwrite solely myself but being able to ask the right questions it holds people accountable because i'm i'm asking the questions that in articulate you know, next level investor might ask to where they're like, okay, we have to come correct. He's not just an athlete. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to a linebacker <laughs> for the Arizona Cardinals, an incredible athlete who has a head to match that body. I'm telling you very rarely, my friend, when, when you're done playing, you better call David Meltzer first because Marshall Let's do and I want you on my team. <laughs> you totally get it and appreciate the perspective that you have and keep being i'm on a big campaign about this the most interested man in the world not the most interesting and he absolutely devon Kennard is interested in improving every single day on and off the field what a blessing it is to have you as a friend today hopefully as a business associate yeah, in the absolutely. future because you know your shit, man i appreciate you devon Kennard here at radio row